Hello everyone, welcome to my tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube using logic. So, what separates this tutorial from all the other tutorials on the internet is that it is going to teach you how to solve the Rubik's Cube from a more logic based perspective versus most of the other ones out there which are really just telling you to memorize things uh, and when you see a case you just do those memorized moves and it magically solves that part. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be walking you through what's actually happening with the cube so that you understand what's happening and therefore it'll be a lot easier for you to learn and you're going to be less memorizing and more understanding what's happening uh, with the cube. Now uh, also the advantage of this is that if you want to become really fast, so sub 30, sub 20 seconds, um, you are going to have a head start on other people who are going to learn the advanced method because you will already be looking at the Rubik's Cube from a more logical perspective, which you're going to have to do if you want to become really fast anyways. So uh, this series is going to be a series uh, and broken up into separate parts and the reason I'm doing this is just first of all it's easier for me to do and uh, it decreases that urge to try to learn big chunks at a time and I'll be uh, split up into sections uh, that you should take one at a time and then learn that section get it down and then proceed also if you you know forget something you can go back and just reference that video I'll have it in a playlist and you know there'll be no problems so without fur further ado, uh, let me get into some of the basics of solving the Rubik's Cube. Okay, so before we get into the actual solving of the Rubik's Cube, uh, there are a couple of main things that should be gone over before solving it. So the first thing is, is that there are six sides and there are six uh, sticker colors that correspond with each side. The second thing is that uh, you have to think of the cube as pieces and not stickers because it's really the stickers are attached to the pieces and that's what really matters. And the third thing is is that there are three kinds of pieces. Uh, first kind is the center piece. Now these pieces are in the center obviously and they do not move relative to each other. They spin, but they do not move. So, uh, if you've ever taken one of these apart, you know what I, I mean. They're attached to a core, and they just spin. But, you, you for example, you couldn't switch these two uh, in any way. It's not possible. Now, the second kind of piece is the edge piece. So, uh, I will refer to these as the two sticker colors that are on them. Uh, so, for example, yellow and red. So, that's a yellow-red edge piece. So, those are the ones in between the corners. Don't get, these, don't get edges confused with corners. It can be very easy. Uh, and then, corners are the corners. And I will refer to these as three colors, because there are three colors on them. So, for example yellow, green, red. So those are the three kinds of pieces and that's pretty much it for that. Now there's also algorithms that I will have to teach even though I'm going to be teaching it from a logical standpoint. So I will have to go over cube notation which is just uh, a way to notate moves. So I do have a separate video on this, but I'll just go over it now. Um, there are six sides, like I said before, they all have different names. The right side is R, the left side is L, so that's easy to remember. Now the front side is F, the back side is B. Now they call the top side up, so the up side is U, and then the down side is D. So uh, try to remember that the top side is actually U, so U for up, and then D for down versus bottom. So how uh, rotation is notated is basically if you're looking at that face, it'll be 
just the letter is going to be clockwise and then the letter with a little uh, dash next to it or like an apostrophe it's really called a prime uh, would be a counterclockwise move so for example the front face uh, F is like this so that's clockwise and then F prime is like this counterclockwise and that goes for all sides now it can be kind of confusing because uh, like R and L are different ways so this is R and this is L but uh, really once you get the the parts that you do have to memorize uh, down you don't really have to remember this but uh, I'll go over the you'll see the algorithms when I show the steps so it's really not much to worry about Okay, so now we can finally get into the first step of solving the Rubik's Cube, which is the cross. Now, I'll just build this really quick to show you what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. So this is the completed cross. Uh, we're going to stick with the white side to start with. Uh, the centerpiece determines what color the side is going to be. And basically, you're putting these four edges in their solved position. So basically, you're matching up the stickers with the centerpiece. So as you can see on this side, those four pieces match with the centerpiece. And then also on the edges, this is very important, uh, people miss this a lot, is that these two colors have to match. So the edge piece and the centerpiece. Because remember, the centerpiece determines the uh, color of the side. So as you can see, they're all the same color. So that's what the cross is supposed to look like. Now I encourage you to attempt the cross on your own and see if you can figure it out. But if not, I'll show you some things that you can do. So uh, basically, you're going to want to pick a piece and then try to solve just that one piece. Don't be switching between pieces. So basically any edge piece with white on it. So uh, this is one, this is two this is three and this is four so those are my four pieces I'm trying to solve now uh, I'll take this one first so this is the white blue piece so I'm going to have to match up one side at a time so what I'll do is that I'll match up the blue first since I can just bring it up like this so see how it moves and I can match it like that and now it's matched up with blue, I can bring it down like this. Now I've also actually solved the red one accidentally. That's good. So with this green piece, um, I want to match it up with green first. So you always want to match it up with the color other than white first. So if I bring it on top like this, uh, and then try to bring it over and match it up. As you can see, this is not matched. So I want to get this side over here. So what I can do instead is instead of uh, using the top layer from here, I can rotate that green all the way around to this slot, like that. And then I can bring the white down like this. Now, uh, for the last piece. The last piece can be the trickiest. So, as you can see, uh, if I do this, like that, that doesn't match up. And then if I do this, that moves the green piece out of the way. So, you think you don't want to mess up your pieces, and you'd be right. But sometimes it just has to be done uh, to get some pieces in sometimes. So... What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to mess up that green piece and then it's just matching it up just like before. Then you can bring down the white piece and then bring down the green piece. So hopefully I gave you some good examples of this or of how to solve the cross. Now if you struggled with that and uh, go ahead and try it first before watching the next part. If you struggle with that, uh, there's an even simpler way to solve the cross. 
And what we're actually going to do is we're going to replace that white centerpiece with the yellow centerpiece. So now all you have to do is just match up, is just put white here, 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 and here. Don't worry about any of the other pieces. We'll deal with those later. So I'll take um, this piece, for example. So I'm trying to get it into one of these four slots. So what I'll do is I'll bring this down here, like this. So I have one. Um, I'll do this one. So I'll just bring it down here and then here. So uh, keep in mind, I can't just bring it down like this because the white does not match up on this side. It's flipped. So I have to put it here instead and then bring it down. Now here I can, it's already aligned so I can just bring it down. And then here, uh, once again we have that same issue uh, that you saw before. So I'm going to have to misalign this one like this to uh, insert this properly and then put this back. So as you can see we now have those four pieces in the proper spot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, a piece and we're going to basically just keep that piece on the front until we find the match for it. So what this is doing is that uh, it's just matching this up and then you're just going to bring it down uh, just like before. So this is just kind of a in the middle step if you just struggle um, when it comes to the cross because the cross is a very logical step there's not a there's not a lot of rules really you just kind of figure it out so this kind of adds in some rules uh, if if you struggle with having a lot of just floating stuff around so uh, so just watch the piece or the side color and then you can just move the bottom two layers until it matches up and then spin that side like so and I'll solve that piece and then just find the next piece do it again like this and then since now it's matched up spin the front and once again that's just bringing that piece down like that and then find the next one match it up alright so there it is once again bringing it down and then alright last piece is already matched up bring it down and then we have the cross completed so I encourage you to try to just get it all on the white side to begin with but if you can't there is an easier way to do it so now you have completed the cross congratulations and uh, the next video will be inserting the corners into the correct spots so thank you for watching